All right, good morning, everybody. Doing all right today? Not too convincing, but uh, we'll see if we can't uh, turn it around today. I'm Brett, pastor at the church. We're continuing our series, Jesus Who, uh, with a sort of an international flavor. More to come on that. A little international flavor today. But Jesus Who, and the whole point of this series has been, you know, who do you say Jesus is? It's a pretty important question. But you know what? We'd rather let Jesus tell us in his own words. Everybody's got an opinion, but why don't we go to the scripture, right? And let Jesus speak to us in his own words. So that's been the whole point of this series. And I want to give you a statement of Jesus as we sort of introduce our emphasis today on reaching out to the world. And I want to give you a statement that Jesus makes in Matthew 28 that's one of the most like astounding statements anybody could possibly make. Certainly, we've seen Jesus claiming to be from God, the Son of God, and it's like, okay, those are big statements. I got another one for you. It's called the Great Commission Passage, and in verse 18 of Matthew 28, uh, Jesus Christ says this to his followers. He says, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, where is this, where is this taking place? Well, this is up by the Sea of Galilee, north of Israel. It's after the crucifixion. It's after the resurrection. It's before the ascension. You remember that Jesus died for our sins on Friday. He was raised on Sunday. And then in his resurrection of body, he appeared to his disciples and more than 500 people at one time, probably up by the Sea of Galilee. And it's there before he ascends to heaven that he sort of gives his final commission to go into the whole world and share the good news. And after he gives the commission, 40 days, you know, or sometime near this, he ascends into heaven, and the disciples, the followers, get busy of sharing the, the good news of the gospel after the Holy Spirit comes upon them with, with power. Well, what a statement. Oh, all authority, all authority in heaven, not just on the earth, but in heaven, has been given to me. Why is he making that statement? Well, because through the crucifixion, and the consequent resurrection, Jesus Christ has conquered all principalities and powers in heavenly places. He's conquered death. He's conquered the devil. He's conquered every enemy that would come against him. And through the cross of Jesus Christ, we can be, we are victors in him. There's forgiveness of sins offered to the world through the payment of Christ on the cross. He paid for it. He settled your sin debt with God. You have Jesus. You believe in him. You have eternal life. So he has authority over death, over demons, principalities, etc. And all authority has been given to him. And now he's about to go into his commission. And so like, therefore, do what I tell you, right? <laughs> go into all the world and tell the good news. But this statement, Jesus in his own words, he's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's seated at the right hand of God right now. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Because he's conquered all. Now here's a prophecy from Daniel given, you know, some 700 years before Christ came. And to him was given dominion, prophecy now of Jesus Christ. To him was given dominion, <clears throat> glory, and a kingdom that all people's nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is Jesus Christ, all power, authority given to him. Now, you may be saying to yourself, if he has all power and authority has been given in heaven and on earth through the crucifixion, resurrection, death's been conquered, that's great news. Why do we have so much trouble in our world today? Seems like the devil has the upper hand. Am I right? It's like, what is he doing? And why so much suffering? And why so much death? And what's going on? Well, let me give you the big picture here. Jesus Christ defeated every enemy at the cross, the devil included, and then is seated at the right hand of God. There is a period of time we're in right now. It's sort of an intermittent uh, or a period in which the good news is going to every person. And the good news is, is that through Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven of sins and have eternal life. The devil is still doing his thing, but he's defeated. He knows he's defeated. Sin and death is defeated. You know, before 
before somebody comes to Christ, death certainly is does have the upper hand. All right. I mean, it's. I mean, all of us in here, we're gonna we're gonna die. Sorry to tell you on this Palm Sunday, but we're all gonna die in here. I mean, you you know, we're just getting older. It's happening. Believe me, I'm just. <laughs> Somebody said, my hip's doing really well. And she's like, yeah, I got a new shoulder, and that's doing really well. And the other guy told me, I got two knees. They're doing great. I'm like, what's happening to us? <laughs> I'm like, I'm waiting for the brain, a new brain, <laughs> AI, you know, artificial intelligence plugged. I can plug in or something. But why do you get me so off track all the time? All right. <clears throat> Here, here's the point, everybody. There's coming a day. There's coming a day when Jesus Christ will return, and he'll establish his kingdom on the earth. There'll be no more death, no more pain, no more tears. The devil, who's already been defeated at the cross, will be cast into the lake of fire. All enemies of God, all enemies, will be judged eternally and pay the punishment of their rebellion against God. That day's coming. We're in this in-between time in which the good news is going out. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just to give you a little flavor of this, describes what happens when Christ comes back. There's the trumpet call, the announcement, Christ is coming. We are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Our bodies that are mortal are put on immortality. We meet the Lord in the, in the air. These perishable bodies that are breaking down take on imp the imperishable. We are changed. We meet the Lord. There's the judgment of the nations, the judgment on the devil, and the beginning of the new heaven and the new earth in which it's all done. Are you with me? We're waiting for that. Waiting for that. 1 Corinthians 15 says this. Then comes the end. He's talking about when Christ returns. We're waiting. We're waiting. He's coming. We're waiting. Then comes the end. We're not at the end yet. Enemies have been defeated, but the end has not come. When the end comes... Jesus Christ delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power, for he must reign, which he's doing now, until he has put all his enemies under his feet. That day, all the enemies under his feet is yet to come, even though defeated. And the beautiful phrase here, Jesus Christ hands the kingdom to his Father for the glory of God. I mean... Jesus Christ came, right, from God. He came as the second person in the Trinity. And he came and he served and he took on human flesh and died for us on the cross, with, which is the whole point of his coming, so that we could be redeemed. He rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, is coming back again. And when he comes back, he hands the kingdom over and God receives all the glory. And it's like, job well done. Redemption. In the meantime, Jesus says, all right, don't get too distracted by all that. we got work to do. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Share the gospel locally and around the world. We've got a job to do. Baptizing people. We'll have baptism today. Baptizing people. When they come to faith, baptize them. Bring them into the church. You know, Help them to get their place in the family of God. Baptize them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. I love that. I love the fact that Jesus has all authority over principalities, powers, death. He has all authority. And I love the fact that he promises to be with us in this great enterprise of taking the good news to the entire world. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't do it. He's the head of the church. He's the good shepherd. He's the son of God, and he is leading, and he won't leave us. He won't leave you. He's going to help us. Now, as a church, we do this locally, and next week's a big outreach. You know, you got your, you got your Spring Hill stuff, you know, your Easter stuff. Use it. Invite people to come to church. We're going to have a big crowd. Hey, you know what the best service would be for you all to come to? Let me tell you right now. The 1 o'clock service. Now, the reason for that is because it won't be that crowded and we'll be able to have a good time together. And my sermon will be down by then, I promise you. All right, so. <laughs> but Spring Hills, I mean, we, we're reaching. That's why we do it. We all do all the stuff we do. We're just trying to reach out to friend, family, friends, right, with the gospel. Because Jesus told us to do that. But we also, um, we also reach out as a church around the world. As we're to do. Go into all the nations, right? All the nations. 
And today we want to encourage you a little bit with that. One of the mis missions that we have as a church together is through Compassion International. Uh, as a church, we sponsor 329, more now because some more have been sponsored, 329 children in Guatemala. Now, what does that mean? It means that, you know, uh, for $38 a month, uh, we have, even I have our, our guy, Kristen, and $38 a month comes out of our account to support him uh, in Guatemala. We're doing that with 300 and probably 35 now, I don't know, kids in Guatemala in the city in which we've chosen. And also, through Spring Hill 3U, we established a compassion center there. It cost $25,000. They put in a kitchen. They put in all kinds of, they provide school supplies. They do all that. Guatemala is an impoverished country. You know, half the country is uh, basically malnutrition, has malnutrition. Half the country, a third of them can't read or write. You get the idea. A lot of kids are in child labor and et cetera. So we just, we just use what God's given us to make a difference in Guatemala. Through Spring Hills Community Church, through the individual sponsorships, the establishment of the Compassion Center, uh, since our partnership began in 2021, you as a church have given $300,000 to these kids. <laughs> so that's a big yay God. And uh, you, you never know, you know, what's going to happen to my kids? What will happen? I mean, will they become a Christian? Will their life change? Well, hey, let me tell you something. We got one of those kids here today. All right, yeah, we got one of those kids going to tell you uh, his story. Would you give it up and welcome David Wangaka? He's coming up right now. Yeah. <laughs> David was one of those compassion kids, not in Guatemala, but Kenya. Tell him, tell him your story. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to thank this church and, and thank uh, Pastor Brett, mostly for pronouncing my last name correctly because it's Wangaka, not Wakanda. So, thank you. <laughs> and I don't speak Wakanda language. We speak uh, Swahili. I'm going to teach you a little bit of Swahili that we speak in Kenya. When you go to church in the morning, you know, you say praise, praise God and people say amen. But we mostly say it in Swahili. So, I'm going to say it in Swahili and say amen. Okay? So, pray. Buana sifiwe. And then you say amen. Buana sifiwe. Amen. amen. That means let it be so. Um, I was uh, born and raised in Kenya, and I grew up in, a, in an environment where you would either, as a young person, were expected to become a thief, or if you are a girl, you would get into things like prostitution. And that's all we saw while growing up, and so there was no um, role models for, for us. My mother used to sell illicit liquor like a moonshine. Uh, to raise five children all by herself. And she was in and out of jail because it was very illegal. So every money that she would make would actually go into bribing the police so that she can come back home. And I remember when she left that kind of profession and started working in a different uh, environment like a restaurant, she was only making less than one dollar a day, which was so hard for her to... Uh, provide for all the basic stuff. So the priority for us was to, li to have a, at least a shelter where we can cover our ourselves from cold and um, bad weather condition. And it was so small, it was 10 by 10 square feet. Um, five children and together with my mother, those are six people in that small uh, house. It's not even a house, it's a, it's a space, I would call it. So during the day, because we did not have beds and we did not have a lot of stuff and uh, it was a dirt uh, floor, during the day we would roll up uh, the cardboards that we would use to sleep on at night and we would make it a living room and then at night we roll them back and it become a bedroom. And the most difficult thing was access to food. Uh, we went starving most of the time and the only way of survival for us was eating from dumpster. So you would wake up very early in the morning before every other person in the area and get some sticks and find whatever has been uh, dumped by trucks. I remember one time my mother became very sick and 
she was somehow concealing her sickness because she didn't really want to uh, break her, our hearts as children because she was the only hope. But it was too late for her because by the time she was going to hospital, I was seven years old, and we were told that she died because she could not provide, um, provide a way to pay for the treatment. She did not have a way to da do that, and it was probably a treatable thing. We lived with different relatives, and, and, and it, we were both rejected. Uh, I remember when I was nine years old, I was living in the street as a homeless child. Um, and that's how the Lord started. Somehow the grace of God, in a miraculous way, God started speaking in my mind somehow. Because I started hearing the word of God in the street when preachers in the street are preaching. And they were talking about being a child of God. And I remember going on my knees and praying that God be my dad. And he's so faithful. Amen? Yeah, he did that. He became my dad. Someone invited me. Uh, to join the center of compassion. And I had no idea it was a compassion center because it was just a church. I was just going to church. And when I was there, there were 300 children running and having fun. And that's how my life started getting transformed is by hearing the word of God. Because I remember one time I'm starving in the street and I started praying. I told God, God, remember you're my dad. But I'm going to try this and see how it's going to work. I want you to feed me manna that you gave Israel. And I started waiting for manna from heaven. While I'm still walking in the street, it was a dirt road. But there was a truck behind me that passed me. Guess what? The truck used to supply bread in different kiosks. It was from a factory. And they dropped five breads. And I was just collecting this bread and just being like, whoa, I didn't expect this prayer to be answered this fast. <laughs> that was like a manner to me. But the greatest thing that happened is when I gave my life to Jesus. Because that's a spiritual poverty. And when I did that, that's when poverty left me. Because poverty is a cycle. It doesn't end. If you're born in extreme poverty, you'll always give birth to uh, you know, to children that are in the same cycle. It doesn't end until it's broken. And so a family picked up a packet of information like the packets we have there. It might have been in an event like this, and they decided to sponsor that little good-looking young man who was smiling. <laughs> I don't know why they picked that. Maybe I was smiling, I think so. But I thank God because I've had the opportunity to meet my sponsor, and uh, she, she lives in Portland, Oregon. And she said, you know, uh, she, had been, she had health issues, but she told me, I could relate with your situation, and you needed this more. And today, I, 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 I'm a graduate with an MBA degree from here in the United States. Amen. <laughs> and that broke the social poverty in my family. All the children and the next generation that is coming, everyone will never see poverty. I am blessed with four uh, beautiful boys. Uh, I'm married. I never knew I would ever get married and have children and live to see them grow. But, and we also sponsor other children uh, through Compassion International. My boys' names are Shalom, which means peace. Amani means peace. And then I couldn't find for the dad born a, a, a cool name. I called him David. <laughs> the, the last one is Israel. And so if I would not have been sponsored, they would not have been in that situation that they are right now without, they don't know poverty. So today we have the same opportunity. And thank you so much for those who are doing that. And please, you're welcome to just come over there, ask me any questions, and pick a child and sponsor, not out of obligation, but out of the love of God to spread the gospel of Christ. Amen? God bless you so much. Thank you, David.
Also, um, just to encourage you, uh, you support as a church. We do Spring Hills, a ministry in India. And uh, it's an amazing ministry. It's led um, by Angel Warrior, is her name. She grew up in India and had a real burden for the sex trafficking that's going on. So she began a ministry a number of years ago. And um, that has that purpose, to lead young girls to Christ, young men to Christ, and to get them out of sex trafficking and give them hope for a new life. So we have a city, it's called Arwal, or a, a area, Arwal, in which we've adopted as a church. And every year we send full support for them, for missionaries and all of that. So um, we have the director of Seed Ministry, a woman of faith, and uh, someone I, I admire so much. Welcome, Angel Warrior. Come on up, Angel. Brett. Good morning, Sun Hills Church. I am here to say thank you for your support of our ministry and to share with you how your giving is making a difference all the way around the world on the other side of the world in India. So India has the most number of people in the world. They have surpassed China with the most population. And India also has the most number of unreached people groups. So if you Look at Matthew 28, 19 that Pastor Brett shared. It says, go and make disciples of all nations. Well, that's actually ethnic groups. And we are focused on two similar ethnic groups who are considered the lowest of the low, the poorest of the poorest in India, and they are considered untouchable. And if you know anything about the caste system, they are so low, they are not even part of the caste system. And they have been oppressed and marginalized for generations, so much so that they have resorted to selling their children as their main source of income. And this has been going on for generation after generation. When we were exposed to these communities, we were shocked that this is still happening in this day and age. I was born in India. My parents didn't know anything about this, and we were devastated. But by the grace of God, and through support of churches like Spring Hills, we are now intervening in 16 different villages. And in the community of Arwal, we sponsor children in a red light area. And the worker, the missionary there couple, is actually from the community. They came to know the Lord through our ministry. And they are working this evil practice is prevalent in hundreds of villages in India. Priya represents just one, this is just one girl who represents many thousands of children who are caught in this exploitation, either through sex trafficking or child marriage, and even boys are trafficked for sex as well as labor. And this is going on for generation after generation. They're caught in this vicious cycle. But in the Spring Hills-sponsored village of Arwal, there are children now who have the opportunity to break out of this cycle. They have the opportunity for education, they receive additional tutoring, and most of all, they get to hear about the love of Jesus Christ. They get to hear that, no, they're not untouchable, but they are special, they are valued, they are cherished, they have a hope and a future, and they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. And so thank you, Spring Hills Church, for joining us in this fight to demolish the kingdom of the enemy and establish the values of the kingdom of God, of justice and righteousness. And it's a miracle that we have been able to rescue some of these children out of risk. And two years ago, we started a shelter home for girls who are most at risk. Last year, we started a shelter home for boys and we also have a boy from the Spring Hills Village who is in the boys' shelter home. But the need is so much. There are so many more children waiting to go into the shelter home because as long as they're in the village, they're still at risk. And we'd like for you to pray for them, pray for our ministry. This is a huge spiritual battle, and we covet your prayers. So I'd like to invite you to come to our table we have some Indian snacks for you to try, but we'd love for you to um, sign up to be on our newsletter so we can share more with you about 
our ministry as well as our prayer updates. Again, thank you for your generosity and for breaking the cycle for vulnerable children in India. Praise God. God bless you, Angel. Uh, we got one more, um, one more en encouraging ministry that you're part of in Kenya, Africa. Lois Osborne and Hoyt Osborne, over 30 years ago, began a ministry. Right, they began it right about the time Spring Hill started, and so um, I found out about them, and our our young church started supporting uh, Lois and Hoyt as they bring the gospel to Kenya, Africa. And uh, so we've had a long relationship with them and encouragement from them. Um, Hoyt died on the mission field. Lois's husband died while they're doing their work. She continues to work now. She's 76 years old and continuing to do what they do, which is plant churches. They've planted over 30 churches, I think close to 40 now, churches. And one story, Hoyt and uh, Lois raised up seven children. They sort of adopted in Kenya. They raised up seven children together. And now those seven children are pastors of the churches they started. And uh, there's no stopping uh, Lois. I mean, she's like an amazing inspiration of somebody serving the Lord. So we caught up with her on Zoom and then uh, kind of cut it up so you can get a feel for what Lois is doing and how God's using you in Kenya, Africa. Watch this. So, Lois, tell us what God has been doing over the last 33-plus years of ministry in Kenya. I kind of don't know where to start when I'm asked that question because God has done so much. We have 37 churches. God blessed us with four new churches last year. We have a pastor, an associate pastor in every church. Right now, KEM supports um, 65 families in Kenya. You know, we we don't support them with a lot. Things have been um, have been more difficult lately, as they are in the whole world. But um, we're just praying for God to help us to be able to help them a little more. And we thank God for what we've been able to do. And you know, if we weren't able to help those 65 families, some of them might even be starving. They would be in desperate situations. Shadrach, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us about what you're doing in the ministry now. Me, I came to the ministry when I was about 20 years. It's when I got saved through Lois and uh, Hoyt Osmond when they came. To Kenya as missionaries because when they came they came to our area and that's how I managed to get saved seen a lot of blessings we have seen many come to Christ through our ministry we have really opened many churches and you know it's just not a matter of open churches the churches are, are they have to have pastors and the pastors who are also trained and that's why we had to come up with our own Bible college there where, where we trained our pastors so that when they go out and they preach the word, we are truly grounded and uh, knowing the, uh, the, the word of God. Another exciting thing that I would like to, I'm sharing with you what's dear to my heart is that we've been able to get into our huge refugee camp that has thousands of people and no churches or few it's mostly muslim and we started the church and um just overnight the church grew to 300 but this year the people on the other side of the camp wanted a church and we're able to start a church there um, so now we have two churches and this is our goal and you guys can pray with us through this um you see by reaching these people, there's sections all over the camp from the different countries. They all have their section inside this camp. So we're burdened to reach into these sections. If we can reach into these sections and reach people to get saved, we can send them back to their home countries to spread the gospel. How much does it cost to support a pastor and family for one year in Kenya? Well, let me give you, it's $80 a month. 
Lois and Shadrach, what, what is the greatest need for the mission work right now? Uh, we need food. And uh, that's one of our needs. We need to feed our people and also raise the support, the salaries for our pastors and their families. Because what they really, what we get and what they get is not really something that can sustain them even in a month. It's just something to push them on. If only we can get uh, more, then they will be able not to worry as they go out and spread the word of God. Here, things are not that uh, uh, easy and things are tough. Being God has blessed us with all this work and we intend to, to continue serving the Lord. God has called us to do the work and there's no shortcut. How, how long do you plan to keep going, Lois? As long as my feet move, I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we haven't told Lois this yet, but uh, we're from our missions account. So when you give to Spring Hills, a portion of it goes to missions. So you can know when you give, you're giving to missions as well and around the world. Uh, and we haven't told her, but from our missions account, we're going to send her a check to support 30 pastors and their families for a whole year. So she's going to get this check, all right? And um, so they can share the gospel, right? You know, I, I watch uh, David's story, he's with Compassion now, and, and uh, Angel's story, what they're doing, what she's doing by faith in India, and of course, Lois's story, and I think to myself, what am I doing with my life? I got one life to live, you know, Christ is coming again, and when Christ comes, a bit, comes again, all sex traffickers will be judged and condemned and the new heaven and the new earth will begin. But what am I doing with the one life God's given me? What does he want me to do with it? And we read it. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go. Don't sit. <laughs> Go into all the world and tell the good news. Baptizing them. Teaching them. Everything that I've taught you and lo, I'm with you till the end of the age. And when the end comes, the kingdom comes. So, you know, we live in uh, Sonoma County, uh, California, one of the most affluent areas in the whole country, right? Here we are, Sonoma, we're affluent, we're affluent. Don't feel guilty about your affluence. Use it. Are you with me? Be generous with it. John Wesley said, remember, make as much, much as you can, give as much as you can. That's what I want to tell you. Keep making it. Some of you are good at making it. You know, you are. You're good at making it. Make it. Make it. Give it. Give it. Don't hold it. What are you doing? You know, it's like we got to wake up. Make as much as you can. Give as much as you can. Uh, so God's raised us up, giving you opportunities for that very purpose. All right. So you don't need to hate it or feel guilty about it. Just use it for his glory. If you're getting baptized today, come on down. Make sure you're down ready to go because we're going to. We're going to do some baptism, which is so exciting. Baptism is for people that have come to know Jesus and want the world to know. And I know we have some in our church today. You've come to Christ, but you've yet to be baptized in this way publicly, and it's an important step for you. So we do it every month, and uh, today we're going to celebrate baptism. When they come out of the water, give them a big shout, all right? And also I want to invite our offering team to come down. We'll take our offering now. And um, we'll have it on the, the baptisms on the screen. She'll be, you'll be able to see them. And uh, we pray for a million more baptisms, right? Uh, let's thank God as we give today uh, just for his work in our life. Lord, we thank you uh, for those being baptized, showing their faith off for what you've done for them and saving them, buried with Christ, raised to walk in newness of life. And now as we offer our offering to you, as a, just an act of worship, we pray that this good news will indeed go to all ethnic groups. Bless Seed Ministry and uh, bless Angel and their team. Bless David and Compassion. And, and Lord, we pray for Lois and her children and all those pastors. Bless them. But use what we give for the furtherance of the gospel. We love you. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you.
those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what he does. He saves us. Before the cross, beneath the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took my breath away. Being so weak that we could bear. But he heard every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his faithfulness. Never once did he fail, and he never will. This is our God. Nobody but Jesus who pulled me out of that pit. He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise. Nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave. Yahweh, Yahweh, who gives the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. We're so glad you were here today. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you at First Wednesday.